Hi, in this video, let me show you my approach to harmonizing a guitar solo or a guitar lick in three steps. And at the end of the video, I'll give you some extra tips and advice that can help you for creating your own dual guitar harmonies. There's a written guide that you can download as a free PDF from my blog. There's a link in the description. Also, I wrote and recorded my own guitar harmony solo. That's another video on my YouTube channel and I will use that one as an example in this video. If you like the material, consider subscribing to my channel. And now let's dive in with step one. Okay, step one. If you want to harmonize a lick or a solo, you have to know what scale you are going to use. You have to know what scale your lick or your melody is written in. And in my case, the solo I recorded was played in the B minor scale. That's the B natural minor scale or B aeolian. And in the PDF, you can find all the diagrams you need to play the B minor scale. So here's the B minor scale for you. So step two is interval. When you want to create a dual guitar harmony or twin guitar lead, you have to decide on a harmonic distance or pitch interval that you want to used to create a new layer of melody. And the basic idea is that this new melody layer will stay a certain harmonic distance from your original melody or solo. Now there are different intervals that you can use, a third, a fourth, a fifth, but by far the most popular way of harmonizing a guitar lick or solo is by um, playing the second melody a diatonic third above the original one. Now a diatonic third means that you move two degrees up in the scale. So for example, the root of the scale, that's the B. When you move two scale degrees up, then you end up on the D here on the seventh fret of my G string. The D is a diatonic third above the B. So here is my diatonic third interval. So you see, if you know the scale, you can use it as a tool to harmonize because you just count to three on every note that you want to harmonize. So you can move two scale degrees up and there you will find the corresponding note that harmonizes with the one you started from. In the PDF you can find the B minor scale completely harmonized in diatonic thirds. Step three is apply and check. Apply and check means that now we are going to use these concepts on the solo in B minor where I actually start with one guitar that plays the basic melody and it starts like this. So the first lick is... The first note is actually a bend where the ninth fret on the high E string is bent a semitone up. So the pitch becomes D. Now, what note harmonizes with that D? Well, if I use my scale and I count two scale degrees up, then I end up on the F sharp here, the 14th fret on the high E string. Well, that F sharp harmonizes with the D. And guitar two in my solo actually plays it as a bend as well. A bend that comes from the 12th fret. So you see that even in harmonizing the bends, I take the scale into account and I start from the 12th fret and I bend it up to the F sharp to harmonize it with the D. After that bend, I release it to the 9th fret. What does guitar 2 do? 
releases that same bend to the 12th fret on that high E string. That is a diatonic third above this note, so the E harmonizes with the C sharp. So step by step, you can move from note to note to harmonize every note, a diatonic third above the original one, and you use the scale as a tool. So that's why it's vital to know the scale and to know how to find that uh, diatonic third to scale degrees up. Step three was called apply and check. And now I've come to the check part because something that is important to remember, in my opinion, is to use your ears as you're harmonizing. Because every now and then when you're harmonizing, certain parts do not sound that good. They may sound a bit strange. I'm not saying they're wrong. They're, they're just not as nice as you would like. Um, and when that happens, I might change the interval. For example, I might change it to a fifth, or sometimes I might even leave out the harmonization. Uh, so use your ears to keep everything in check. Finally, as promised, a few <laughs> tips that might uh, help you overcome some obstacles when harmonizing, starting with tip number one, keep it easy. Uh, if this is the first time you're harmonizing and you want to write a harmonized solo, Use basic rhythms, use long notes, use chord tones, don't make it too difficult on yourself. Uh, it's a great concept, but um, it, it can go wrong as well. So uh, start out easy and uh, that way you can get the hang of it. The second tip I want to give you considers bends and something that may be difficult when you harmonize parts with bends and that is you have to match the bending speed. Every bend has a certain speed. Slow or fast. So it's important in the harmonized part that you try to match that bending speed and the way I like to overcome that obstacle is to record the first part completely then listen to it a few times so I can memorize uh, the bending speeds and then I try to mimic it in the harmonized part. The third tip I want to give you considers vibrato. Watch out with playing too much vibrato because vibrato is by definition a wobbling of the pitch. And if you play a very wide vibrato it becomes more difficult to harmonize because your pitch interval is unstable. Uh, so you can try to match your vibrato, but especially when you play with two guitar players, it can be an obstacle when you play a harmonized part. So use vibrato lightly or leave it out in one part. The fourth tip I want to give you um, has to do with tone. Now, our brains have a tendency of identifying the upper part in a harmony as the most important one, as the main melody. So sometimes I find it necessary to lower the volume of that upper part a little bit to keep the two uh, parts in balance. A fifth tip considers tone as well. It can help to make both melodies blend even more by uh, dialing in the tone control of one of your guitars. So you leave room for the treble and the pick attack, so the transients of your signal, with one guitar. In a similar way as a backing vocalist will often articulate a little bit less to leave space for the articulation of uh, another singer. So uh, dialing in the tone control, rolling off the highs a little bit in one of the two parts can help to make it blend even uh, better. And finally, my final tip for you is don't overdo it. I think the dual guitar harmony is a great technique. It's a fantastic concept and there are numerous great examples of it. Uh, but I also think you can overdo it. So use it as a surprise, use it as an effect have fun with it. I think your audience will love it if you harmonize a part at a certain point in your set. Uh, but if you do it too much, it becomes somewhat of a gimmick. Um, that's my opinion. So when in doubt, leave it out. 
and when it fits go for it there's more information in the written guide in the pdf there are some listening tips you can find my three steps and my extra advice in there you can find all the tabs the scale diagrams and also an extra section about the diminished scale and a little tutorial on how to harmonize that mysterious sounding scale so i hope you had fun with this harmonizing lesson i certainly had fun making it subscribe like leave me a comment leave me a link to one of your guitar harmonies and i hope to see you again next time bye bye